You can't just come in and be like, hey, I got this new setup. I'm going to just roll this mm -hmm. out this week. You, yeah. you know, you could get pushback from your band members. Mm -hmm. You get pushback from your sound sound team. Yep. You get pushback from your pastor. I don't know if there's worship wars on track, but I'm sure <laughs> there are. Oh, yeah. Today, we're going to be answering the question, why are we using tracks? And what are the benefits, the drawbacks, the cost? And we're going to talk a lot about Loop Community, and this is all in preparation for the release of our course on Loop Community. So Mike's in our band, and actually I'm in Mike's band, I, I guess. I'm in Mike's band because he's yeah, the band the leader. Around, yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> it used to feel like Michael's in my band. Now, my, now I'm in Mike's mm -hmm. band. I'm just glad to be there playing. He's the music. What do you, what do you call yourself? The supreme the band leader. Supreme band man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he's, the, he's the band leader, so he can heckle you in your earphones. When nobody's uh, nobody's listening, that's what he does to me. He makes me feel insecure. Mm -hmm. When I hit a wrong note, he looks at me. And then, uh, do you do that on purpose, or do you just no? <laughs> Sometimes. If you hit a wrong note and I go like this, does it make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> no. Does it make you feel did you nervous. Hear my wrong note the other night, though. Yeah, I did. Oh, it was so bad. Yeah. Our last Sunday. This it was before. like uh, some kind of accidental that wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, I was in the wrong key in my head. Yeah, and then. Yeah. Oh, I do that all the time. Oh, it's terrible. It was so loud because it was just piano. So I know. It was terrible. Because I look back, I, I, I didn't do it on purpose, but I, look, I looked at, um, was it John playing bass? <laughs> yeah. like, I looked wow. at John. John looked at, we all looked at each other like, oh, I guess, okay. Yeah. I guess that's the, 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 the note of the song. <laughs> that was a good worship fail moment. Uh, it wasn't as bad as my, I mean, do you remember a couple, like, six months ago or maybe a year? It was probably a year ago. I played that big guitar solo, and at the very end, I, like, ended mm. on the, were you on stage or were you in the I audience? I think I was running the, I think you're I was running, running sound? sound. Oh, that's and bad. I had you, like, jacked. That's yeah. bad. I, yeah, and I, I ended, like, on a totally wrong note, and it was like, wah! Yeah. And then at the end, you know, because once that happens, I'm just, I'm pretty much just out of, like, Everything in me is just shuts yeah. down. I'm like, oh, I'm, I stink. So anyway, at the end, it was so bad. I needed validation or something. So I go, I go, did he? Because I was thinking maybe nobody heard it. Because sometimes nobody, hear, you know, the guitars mm -hmm. are buried, and you're like, but I knew because you were running sound. That's not the case. They were not buried. Mm -mm. So I went up to a couple of people. Like, did you? They're like, yeah, we mm -hmm. heard it. I'm like, did did you hear that? Did you? They're like, yeah, we heard it. Like it wasn't even like. Most time people will go like, oh, no, 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 I don't, no, I didn't. You know, you, you, you make a mistake and only you notice it, mm. probably. Yeah, that was awesome. That was, that was the worst. I time. think because uh, you were going off in practice and then the pastor's dad walked in and you're like, oh, I can't do all that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think it messed with your head a little bit. I think so. I, I hope he wasn't there too. Maybe he was. Maybe Everybody was there. It doesn't matter. It was second service probably. Yeah. It was bad. Even even John was there. Everybody was there. Um, so anyway, that's that's our that's our fail. We all fail. That's okay. Oh, man. Especially yeah. on the piano. It's harder on the piano to me, I think, because you you've got to change keys on all those tracks all the time. Mm -hmm. You got to always be like, yeah. hey, okay. So have you ever? Uh, I've never been in a service where you started the track in the wrong key. Uh, yeah, I did uh, a few months ago with Maddie and yeah, about killed her. A whole step higher than she's oh, wait. used to. I think I was there one week when you guys started a song. I didn't know that. It didn't notice that you did it, but somebody started the track. Probably was you. And then Leah was singing, but it was like way high. Was yeah. that the one you're talking about? No, this we were doing. Oh, come to the altar, and she does it in E. And so Maddie's a what is he at alto, so she can't sing too high. Yeah, and right. I transposed. And like when I let off the button, it went up again, and I didn't realize it, so I just started the song. And yeah, so we did it in F, and about killed her. Really? Yeah. But so she did it. Nobody noticed. Mm -mm. But she, she was noticed. Like, she kept looking at me. I was like, and shaking her head, and I was like, what is she doing? Can she not hear herself? And then I looked and I realized we're like, um, oh, first verse. Because she puts her songs it. like right at the key, like the highest key that she can. Like yeah. she knows where her range is. Like mm -hmm. E is the like that's the the bridge is like the top for her. So yeah. She picks her songs quite. Specifically, like I would, so yeah, a half step probably would mess her up. Yeah, and some people it might be like a whole step E to F. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it was. Yeah, that was up there. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think like in practice, sometimes you start the track, and it's like a totally different, you know, because you, you're messing with keys, and you go from one to the other. It sounds like a train wreck. Mm -hmm. You haven't done that in service. No, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, mm -hmm. no train wrecks. No. So we've, yeah. 
tracks are new to me. I've been playing. Uh, I'll I'll start out with this because I started playing guitar back in the '90s, and you're you're about my age, right? You're you're mm. you're yeah, younger than me. Anyway, so you remember back when there were no tracks? Yeah, never heard of tracks. Until you remember like ten years ago? Back when musicians could play, they mm-hmm. didn't need somebody telling them what to do. When I grew up in in rock band, you know, in in the rock band I was in, we didn't have anything like that. We just came in, the drummer played. We didn't have clicks until, and I'm I'm sure back in the '90s the bands were using clicks, but we weren't. We were mm-hmm. like in junior high, you know. So we go to practice, we play, we go to gigs, we play the songs super fast. We didn't mean to. My college band, <clears throat> actually, we were we would speed up. That that guy was speed mm-hmm. speed demon. He plays with clicks now, but in all through college we recorded even our recordings. And maybe someday I'll share those. There, there's no click. So you can hear. And we were like kind of a punk ska rock band. He was into more of that ska, so it would get real fast. Mm. And I was more into rock, so I'm playing like rock. And then all of a sudden it's turning into ska. I don't know. So we didn't, we didn't use any of that. So it's weird to me that you, when, when you get into tracks and stuff now that young musicians, they just don't, they don't have any sense of like maybe what that feels like to just jam. Mm. You notice that with your... Yeah. I mean, even if we do a song where we don't have a track for it, everybody wants a click still. Yeah. It's like, let's just play it. No, we want to click. Like, they, like, now that you, when you get used to it, yeah, it's, it's almost impossible to play without a click. But I've, I've met drummers who, uh, in fact, I've known some semi pro drummers, and I would, I would, I delete the pro from them after they say this, but they, they've played a lot of places and they're, they're actually not like just newbie drummers that won't play with the click. They, they just won't do it. Have you ever met anybody like that? That won't, no. What's the, like I said, growing up, we, it was like, I, we, a couple different, we're, our backgrounds are different church wise. So, yeah. But yeah. We just like, our growing up was our, the, the pastor's wife, she played the organ and she'd start the song and then they would just follow her. With the drums, then, mm-hmm. not with, with the drums. Just like shoot, start song, and then I, like all the the rest of the like we just had bass, piano, organ, and drums. But like our drummer and bass player were really good. Like they were married, married couple. Okay, yeah, you told me about. And so that. yeah, they were really good. But yeah, you you hear it, like cause once everybody starts worshiping, and getting excited, the song gets really fast, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's one thing I do like about Click because. Um, it's it's taught me more about the pocket. I mean, I think I was pretty a pretty good rhythmic. I play the drums too, so I, I have a pocket of my own, and I don't typically tend to speed up. But um, the click will definitely. I mean, I definitely have started worship songs like so fast and mm. realized midway through like this is terrible. Like, but you can't stop. No. You're already in. It's already going. Yeah. And you lose the whole the whole feel is gone. Yeah, everything's gone because you're and you're just trying to get through it. Then like I got to get through the song. And maybe some churches would like that. They'd be like, yeah, we're doing it. We're getting into it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But the I've had yeah, I have a lot a lot of this stuff. These these drummers that that think that they're better than the click. And maybe there are drummers out there that are good. And I, I believe there are drummers that can hold time pretty good. In fact. I think this is true that Saturani back in the back in the day his little trio recorded a whole record without a click and they wanted to be like prove that they could be as perfect without the click and I think they could probably do it mm. guys at that level but it still was a and and I, maybe I'll look into it or maybe you guys on out there listening check it out see if you can find out if Joe Saturani did record a whole album with no click back when you know albums were recorded to clicks you know I don't. I don't know the history. I don't know when they came in and said, "Let's have a click track." I mean, surely not the Beatles. They were just. I mean, you can tell how music evolved all the way to now, to where it sounds almost fake. Mm -hmm. This is like, yeah, it's click pitch correction. Everything's perfect, and now we can't even. You know, it's you listen to music back in the seventies, eighties, and it's very raw. Even the mixes and drum sounds. So everything has changed, and the church has changed too. So. Let's. Uh, to me, it, it's it's. I'm I'm on the fence both ways. I like the click. I like the tracks. But then I I, if I was playing in my own band and just had my, I don't know that I would use them. But we're gonna use clicks and tracks in my my band that I'm working with now. So, it, I'm I'm in like a love hate relationship with the clicks. Mm-hmm. But we're gonna let's go through and tracks. Let's go through why we use tracks, and what are the benefits? Because I don't I don't think that I think some people listening, even in as I'm on forums, I can tell some people like this, some people don't. But everybody's everybody's doing it. Mm-hmm. So why, um, 
what's the benefit that you you found using tracks starting back from the day because you've been doing it in a while yeah i mean we come when i started leading worship at the my church in louisiana we just had a drummer bass and piano that was it and then you know and then i switched over to guitar and played guitar for a while but i just seen like churches were doing it so i was like hey just looking into it just trying to make it sound better really make everything more full and so we started we first the first our first thing was a fail we just without tracks just tried to use a click and we couldn't do it like it was horrible we got we tried to practice and the drummer couldn't figure it out just to stay on the click but once we incorporated actual track it was like night and day we almost instantly got it stayed on the stayed on the click the whole time because we were playing with other musicians that weren't there and so that like for our, for that drummer really helped that drummer he could hear, you know, the chorus coming up, all that. So, yeah, it just, like, a lot of people are against it because they're like, you can't, you can't be spontaneous, which you can. You just got to figure out how to do it, learn how to do it. There's so much, there's so much to tracks, the benefits. You know, like, if your bass player calls off that week, just plug in the bass, you know, and if you got, if your guy can mix it right, you won't know a bass is there. Like, we've done it, we're the drummer. We didn't have a drummer. We just shut the lights off in the cage. And it sounded like the drummer was there the whole time, which you just got to mix it right. Yeah, I've noticed that in our in our church the drums are dark, mm -hmm. so you know I'll play drums and people won't even know I'm back there. Mm -hmm. So I guess you could. And I've noticed weeks I've been there weeks where you didn't have a bass player, and I think you just turned on the bass. Mm -hmm. This was recently. Yeah. And it's just as good. So <clears throat> if you're a small church and you don't have musicians, you can. That's that's where I think it's going, and, and Jeffrey's church is doing that. They they stripped everything down to the worship leader and tracks recently, so they're just gonna let him lead worship with tracks because they don't have a full band yet, and they're they're gonna slowly start adding singers, and they're gonna add a drummer, they're gonna add a bass player, so they can build this really good quality sound from the ground up, and that's that's a different approach. I've never tried that before, but I think it would definitely work. You could mm -hmm. get the congregation used to tracks, yeah. Because at first people are, are weird about it, but then. Eventually, it you know fades away. It's no big deal. Something happened to me back when I was younger in music, Christian music, and it, it changed my whole opinion of tracks. Because I would think they're cheesy. I would I would probably still think they're cheesy if if I didn't go. I saw uh, Point of Grace. You know, you mm -hmm. remember them? And then do you do you remember a band called like Aaron Jeffrey? Mm -hmm. They were way way back then, but they were yeah. kind of they. There was a dad and son. Yeah, group. yeah. They, they were sing. they were killing it. Yeah. They were I, I mean amazing vocalists. Mm -hmm. So I saw. Aaron Jeffrey and Point of Grace in concert, some big church. You know, it was a, it was a church concert, but they they came and I I didn't know anything about Christian music. I was like into Metallica and stuff. You know, mm -hmm. so I go to this and Point of Grace to Metallica. <laughs> yeah. I was at Metallica. Then. So, Let's go to Point of Grace, Mom. Mm -hmm. Or no, I'm I'm sure I didn't go with. I don't know if I went. I was probably a I was a teenager. So I go I go there and they, Point of Grace comes out plays to tracks and you know Aaron Jeffrey came out played all the tracks and they were and they were I was floored I was like they were amazing was I didn't it just care. them two like no just, band yeah just those wow. two and everything else was on track and it sounded amazing because they were vocal group kind of mm -hmm. and but the 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 gig that they were at Point of Grace and them only used tracks and so I was like whoa that was amazing they, it was the singing you know it was mm -hmm. Aaron Jeffrey I don't think I cared that much about Point of Grace I mean they were good too but. Uh, Aaron Jeffrey were two dudes, and they mm -hmm. were like good singers. I wish they were. St I'm, I'm sure they're still around. Actually, I think my wife knew that the the son for a minute. He was here in Nashville. Anyway, so from that point on, I was never against tracks. I was like, dude, that blew me away. Mm -hmm. So if you if 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 you were just a single worship leader up on stage playing, and you had a whole band behind you, I mean, it would it might seem kind of weird. But then if it's good quality, and you have a good voice. I mean, your church is gonna. I mean, they might go like, wow, that was. I mean, I don't see how it could go wrong. Yeah. You know, even if you were a single dude, but if you're if you're like talking about missing a drummer, if you're talking about missing a missing a guitar player, the the other problem the other problem that the industry created for church musicians is all these productions are amazing. Mm -hmm. So there's like six guitar tracks. There's like four. The keyboard tracks, pads yeah. yeah i mean mm -hmm. and you know them because you see all the tracks i just hear them on the radio like okay how am i gonna when i'm practicing to play I'm, I'm listening to the track going okay there's like okay there's this little ding 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 ding. i'm like well that's a keyboard it sounds like a guitar but you just kind of have to pick and choose but yeah when i'm playing with you guys i don't i don't stress as much anymore because the parts are in there mm -hmm. it just depends like for us um because so some people are like oh if you don't have strings you shouldn't put strings in there if you don't have 
acoustic player that then you, there's no way you should hear an acoustic guitar in the track it's you just got to mix it right like we have strings like we use every track that's on there even yeah. if i if i have two guitar players and there's six guitar tracks we use all the guitar tracks you just got to layer them right that's all it is it's all about the sound because it just makes the sound full so like with strings if there's like a crazy string accompaniment to the track you just mix it right it ain't out front in front of everything it's just it's maybe you might even bury it but it just makes everything f- more full because like I, what you're saying about Aaron Jeffrey, the first time I realized tracks was I went to a Toby Mac concert, and his guitar player is awesome. And like in the middle of one of the songs, he stops playing because his pedal board shorted out, and he's like down there trying to fix it. But you hear the guitars just blaring. You don't hear him doing all his fancy stuff, but you hear the guitars like that. That was one of the best concerts I've been to. One of Toby Mac's concerts, like the mix. Oh yeah. And I was like, what in the world? How how am I hearing guitars? And he's down there not even playing. You know, they had to bring a whole pedal board out for him and everything. But then once you start playing, you you hear how it was all mixed, and I was like, yeah, that's a, that's how we want to do it, you know, with tracks. Yeah, I think when you have a moment like that, it's like take out the tracks. It, it's the same thing when you listen to our band, and we have a pretty polished band now. But if you if you just took out the tracks tomorrow, like if we we're just playing, and then you took out the tracks, you notice uh-huh, a time. difference. I mean, mm-hmm. we'd still be playing, and we can still play our parts. And and I'd say seventy percent of what you hear is really the band. But there's all this like upper candy, you yeah. know, ear candy, and then there's this lower support, kind of kind of wrapping the band up and making it sound polished. Mm-hmm. And you don't even have to try that hard. I mean, as a musician, I, I I've been appreciating them more because of all the guitar parts. I'll learn one, and I know I'm not going to learn all four of them. And I know and even if there's a hard one, I'm like I don't really get that one. I just let it go, and I know, and I'll hear it during practice. Oh, mm-hmm. there it is. It's in there. So I mean, if you're if you're just starting out and you're not a great guitar player and you don't got all the and you're like, oh man, intimidated by even the intros of some of yeah. these songs, you know they're gonna be there. Mm-hmm. That's it. Works know? both ways for like just say like Lion and the Lamb, like the intro. Yeah. So like if our guitar player could play it, like I played with a guy that couldn't play that part, which was hilarious. So like during that part, he would actually pretend to play it, like he'd move his fingers, but you'd hear the track, you know. Yeah. But, like if you like if we're playing with you. That lead part, we just turned it down. It would still be in the mix, but it, it would be like maybe at 30% instead of 100%. And then you play on top of it, so it actually makes you sound bigger than you really are. Yeah. That's what does. With, that's what tracks do with everything. So like for when we play with our band, like I always have the piano track low if I'm playing, but the, all the other key parts, because there's, there's like said three or four different, there's like octaves going on, all kinds of different stuff, and that stays up while the piano part stays down, and it's just layered over me. So the, yeah, the track just... It just enhance. It's just an enhancement. That's all it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm gl- I'm glad I brought you in here because you've got such a nuanced experience with this. You're a musician, and and it's not just like oh, turn the tracks on and the bands. It isn't like that, and it, I think that's what gives people. A, at least that's the vibe I get when people are against them. It's like oh, we want to be a band. It's like well, yeah, but bands use all kinds of tools. You know, we yeah. use reverb, we use uh, pedal boards, like we use. Uh, pads. I mean, we use all kinds of stuff. So tracks are, are yeah. just um. If like you know how a guitar player, you how many pedals you got on your board? Fifteen pedals. Probably at least. You know to make your sound better, and that's all tracks does is make the band sound better. It makes you tighter, makes you a better band. It, it can be a negative too to where like your band doesn't practice as much because they know you get the tracks can cover them. So you got to watch, be very wary of that. But, Which I just admitted to, kind of. Uh, in a way. In a way, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If you see a guy that comes every week and doesn't, he's not practicing because he knows the track will cover him up, then you have to have a conversation with him. Might as well just like, turn his guitar off and he just stands there. Yeah. And, you know, does what you can with tracks. Like, but like how we mix our tracks in church, they're not, they're just in there. Like you, like you said, you turn them down, you can, you can tell the difference in like the fullness of everything. Right. But yeah, our tracks don't, we play on top of the tracks. The tracks don't play on top of us. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's totally true. Um, so you're able to produce more polished production with a small team. That's one of the benefits. Yeah. And even a single worship leader could lead with tracks if he had no band, which is what um, Jeffrey's ba- band is doing in New York. And um, it's a built-in click. It makes your band tight. That's that's the thing about... Um, I've, I've struggled, and we'll just talk a little bit about this, with some drummers that can't play to a click. And then it was interesting you said that. Like, he couldn't play to the click, but he could play to the track. Mm-hmm. I had a drummer who couldn't play to a click, and he was open to playing to a click. And I think we only, to be honest, to be fair, I don't think we use tracks in that church. We just use click, and it was a little bit. This was back way back in like two thousand five, so it was pretty far back. I'm not even sure they had a lot of track, you know, like what they have now, mm-hmm. like Loop Community. I'm not sure they were even around in two thousand way back. Uh, 
but I, I used, so our drummer couldn't play to a click. So I, I got this bass drum thump click in his head for about a month. So I used like a beat, like a beat buddy pedal mm-hmm. or something. It just, it just threw down this thump. It was like a bass drum. That was our click. And so after about two months, this guy, he was all over the place. He was kind of, he's a good drummer, but he was like, all his fills were really fast. And he, mm. he could play really fast, but he'd always be speeding up, especially within his fills. About a month or two in, because he was like just trying and struggling with this click, he, he started getting on the click and became probably the best drummer I've, I've played with in all of my, one of at least of the top three best drummers I've ever played with. Because he already had all the chops, but he couldn't, he couldn't, he didn't have a pocket. Once he got the pocket with that click, then he could say to that click, he would never get off. Mm-hmm. Whatever fill he was doing, it was wild stuff. He would just be on that click. And yeah. he played, we played together for a couple of years after that. And it was just the best. It was like, I knew he was never going to fail. Mm-hmm. But it does, I said all that to say it will make your drummer killer better. Yeah, it will make, make your everybody. band better, it'll tighter. Make me better. Yeah, it'll make, no, it'll make uh, guitar players better. Uh, I've met... But it will take some time to mm-hmm. get to the click. But I liked your suggestion, like play the play the tracks. If you start out now with just tracks instead of just a click, is intimidating. And I started playing it with click when I was like in when I was in ninth grade. You know, early we were like recording and we played with clicks. Mm-hmm. I don't know why my college band didn't, but very early I could play to a click, and it never left me. So it's just in my brain. But once I think even older musicians once it, once they click with the click, they're like. They can do it. Yeah. That's what, when I was in my first band, I was the rhythm player. And like we had an amazing lead player, but his rhythm wasn't great. And so I started every song because I, de- I had pretty decent rhythm. And I thought I was like really good until I started trying just to click. And I couldn't play with just a click. Like it was horrible. Just simple chords, <laughs> like a one, you know, four or five. I couldn't do that in a click. And then until we we put the track on and then like it just made more sense. And I would suggest like even like if you're just a single worship leader, like you and you have you buy a track and there's 20 tracks on there or 20 instruments. You don't have to put every two, all 20 in there. Just add a guitar, add the, you know add strings or just even a pad and then play with that with the cues and it, it'll make and start start out that way before you add all like you do full band drums everything you know might freak people out especially in the smaller churches. Yeah, you so know, you could use the pads and do pads and strings and. You know, add, just add electric, you know, the lead electric in there with you and a rhythm and just keep it super simple for a while and then just keep adding until you figure it out, you know. Yeah. So let's let's move into drawbacks of clicks. And we, we've kind of talked about some of them and, and mostly we talked more about what people feel about them. But what are some of the some of the drawbacks that I wrote down here are are not true and some of them are true. So some people say they're rigid. Uh, or there's two preset orders. They can't flow in worship. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that. Why is that not true? Or why is um, why would it be true? I mean, and it why could would be it not both. Be true? Yeah, like a lot of people want or might want to go back into the course or you know do something do more spontaneous. And at first with tracks, yeah, it was a lot harder. But now with the new updates, it's incredible what you can do with tracks. Like you can before you'd have to like if you want to do the course again, you just click on the course. Like, you have to be prepared. Like, it's not, like, super, super easy to do. But you just, like, if like if the they look at you, let's do the course again, you just have to click on it on the actual track, which we'll show you in our, on our, when we do the screen shares and all that, we'll show you how to do that. But the stuff now, I mean, you can flow into every song, go back into new songs just by a click of a button. So, so you can, super. So you're running this, and we're, we're going to talk more about that, but if you're on the iPad... What I was talking to a worship leader the other day was like, you can just, it seems easier because you can just touch the screen mm-hmm. with the computer. You just have to use your mouse, touch the yeah. touch the chorus, and you're going back to it. And you and they have MIDI pedals and all kinds of stuff. They got so, pedals, and now they got this new update. They got pads in there. So, like, you can just click the button next, or you don't have to click it. You can preset it. Because, like, yeah, we want spontaneous worship, but we also, which it can flow, but then at other times you kind of like, Hey, if if it goes this way, we'll have this song prepared for it. You know, which is always it's just you're not forcing worship on people. You're just being prepared. There's nothing wrong with being prepared. You know, and so you could have it set to where it automatically goes into the same key you're going to with just a pad, and then you can you can do your spontaneous on top of that pad, and so it's just seamless. So it so that it's rigid or it's preset. That would probably be I would say some of the biggest friction that I've heard or mm-hmm. that I would think if I was going to do pads or tracks. 
And I think what, what you're saying is that once you once you get to it, that's not necessarily true. Yeah, because like the church I came from, I was worship leader with my sister, and me and her could flow. I mean, we could do ten songs, like just bam, just bam, go, bam, go, bam, go. just go. And so we obviously we didn't have tracks for all that, which we could. But it's if the spirit's moving, you just flow. And if you got a decent, good enough piano player, or you know, and worship leader, you can just you don't even have to worry about the tracks. You can just flow. You know, you don't need a track to flow. Right. You know? So you could have a song on a track, and then you could throw down a pad in that same key, and you could sing three songs, and then mm-hmm. you could know we're going to end the set with this song, and you could start the track whenever you want to. Yep. And it, yeah, that would be. It seems like it would be so so easier, so much easier. So I'm I'm glad that, yeah. I like the fact that they have the pads now and that they that you have crossfades. We're going to show you how to do all that in, in the course. So it says uh, here somewhat more complicated setup. So that's that's that could be a drawback. Yeah, you had to look. You had to look like figure it out how to do it. Because like I, you know, I was just a guitar player and piano player. Right. And then I was like, hey, can you set up our sound? And like YouTube, I just YouTubed everything. I mean, hours of YouTube. And just you figure it out. But like we'll show you how to do that. It's really pretty simple. It's just a couple chords you need. In fact, to start out really simple. Yeah, if you, I mean, we have a little bit more complicated setup, and we're going to talk about this track rig and everything else. There's eight inputs or whatever. We use the Scarlet. It's a little more complicated, but it's basic recording equipment. But yeah. uh, there isn't a setup where you can just take your iPad, plug in the uh, headphone jack mm-hmm. right into the mixer, right and that's the, it. That's you know? it. Yeah, yeah that's what so. we, that's what we did. We did iPad right into the. It was a what aux cable into and then at the other end it was two xlrs and plug that into our snake and that was it was just two inputs so yeah it was just simple you just hit play so in this in even in the most simple setup though a drawback is you do need an in-ear setup yeah, you and have in-ears. to stay with the tracks you cannot just use floor wedges why mm-hmm. why not because you hear the click <laughs> if you do that you hear click 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 you know, yeah because through well, everything everybody has to hear the click or at least most of the band is going to have to yeah. hear that click and the guide mm-hmm so what we what we would do is put the the click in the guide in like uh, the left channel into the mixer and then out of your iPad and then the the all the tracks if it was the most simple setup all the tracks would go into the other channel and then that little click and guide that little click 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 verse verse chorus voice is going to be only be heard by the band and that's mm-hmm. why you can't just use floor wedges I've heard I forget where I was but they I think it was at a showcase and. John kept looking at me like, can you hear the click? I'm like, yeah, they were running the click through the uh, mm. floor monitor. I think it was just they were running bands through there, and some of them had their clicks bleeding over into the floor wedges. So it, you, couldn't, you couldn't do that. I mean, I guess you could. It'd be pretty tacky. <laughs> but you're going to have to have some sort of in-ear setup, which, which can be done for pretty cheap. We're, we'll yeah. talk about that in our, in our other podcast. But I wouldn't feel too, too bad about that or feel like that's not a drawback. Under a few hundred bucks, you can mm-hmm. you can have a simple setup. Mike's got a good yeah. one. He's going to show it to us. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that now. The cost, like uh, the software, and we're going to be focused on loop community during this whole section. There are other things like multi tracks, but like let's just break down, Mike. When you started back and you, you were in a small church, you started using tracks. What what was your you you got by pretty cheap? I know that. Yeah. Well, when so when we started, it, there was only loop community and multi tracks out there. And loop community is much more cost friendly, I would say, than multi tracks. Multi tracks is expensive, which multi tracks might be a little better product. Right. But I think now they're, they're they're fighting for competition. That's so they're so pretty even now. But loop community is just so much cheaper. The app's free, and then there's so many different kinds of like say, um, this is our God from Phil Wickham. There's like you can buy the master track, which it's. 35 bucks, I think, for the master track, which is his actual track. So you're playing with Phil Wickham and his band, which cool. is, is awesome. But then you can buy Loop Community's track because they have their own studio musicians that will record the same track their way. It's it's pretty identical. There might be a couple different things. The drums might sound different or, you know, they might have a pad or different guitar part in there, but it's the exact same. But they're they're mimicking the record M- yeah, kind yeah. of on purpose. Yep. And those are a little cheaper. So those are, I think those are 25 maybe 30 bucks. For those, for the full track, that's full stems. So that's like you get the full stem on your computer where you could take it and, and put it in anything, any logic. You could put it able in anything. But then they have versions where you just get like in app only, where you could only use it on the app. And those are cheaper. But then they, what's so great about Loop Community is if Loop Community has producers from all over the world that will make that track. And so you can just listen to them all. And if you like this guy's track, it's, it's like 10 bucks. 
okay. to buy, and it's That's a full great. track. But so like some some people will only put like a, a drum or a, like a pad and keys in there and a guitar part. So that's, but then the others is like full band. So just, you just got to listen through them, but there, it's just so much more cost effective. So you're that. talking about that clears it up. Cause you're talking about 10 bucks, probably at the most or at the least at the least, some of them are five, five or 10 bucks, yeah. you know, if you, so if you're, if your church is small and they're strapped on cash or $35, if you've got, you know, if you know, you're going to do this Phil Wickham song for the whole year and you're going to pay $35 one time, you mm-hmm. have it forever, basically. Yep. yep forever. And uh, you can, so, you know. But, yeah, even that Phil Wilkham track, though, like you, like I said, you can buy the, where you get all the stems, which is every part is separated for you. And okay. They, they, send it, they send it to you like a zip file. So, like I said, you could take that and record your own version of it with his band, you know. Yeah. D- didn't you tell me before, like on that Phil Wickham, you can buy all the stems or you can buy just one that has the stems mixed? Or? Yeah, you, you can do, you can do, like all the stems or like just stems mixed, or you can, you can even go in there now to just pick out what you want. Like, hey, I only want the guitar, drums, bass, and keyboard part. Well, you can click on those four, and then that's all the track you'll have, and it's like, and that changes it's like the, 10 bucks. the price? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. We have a couple. They're called split tracks. We have a, we use a couple of those. Okay. Yeah, and then also, so you can buy them right on Loop Community. You can also buy them on, the cool thing I like about Loop Community, and it's probably both ways, but multi-tracks, you can buy tracks from multi-tracks, mm-hmm. upload the them yep. into Loop Community, and for a small like storage fee, you said you can... Yeah, you can, I think I was looking at it last night. I think it's for five bucks a month, they give you, is it 50 gigs, maybe 10? I have to look at it again. 50 gigs or five bucks 25 a month, yeah. gigs, a, and... You can upload as much songs till you reach that limit, and so they have monthly plans now. Which when we first started, they didn't have any of that. But it's this. We'll talk about that in our okay. our, our live thing. But also, uh, based on cost, you could actually make your own tracks, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You, can, you could record your own bass and make your own clicking guide and upload it into your loop community. Yep. That's if you're if you're techie For and you free. want to save money. Yeah. And or if your budget, if your pastor's budget's like, hey, you only have five hundred bucks this year for tracks, and you've already reached it, and you're savvy, like you're like, hey, I'm gonna make a couple, or I'm gonna add, whatever. Mm-hmm. That seems like a lot of work, but a yeah. lot of some guys are producers; they want to yeah. do their own. We've done a couple, or like with our band. Yeah, I've made a couple, and we put up, we play with it on Sundays. Only only downside is like, yeah, you need at least do the five buck a month thing, so you can have the storage. Because if okay. you don't, you have to con- you can only like they give you like two hundred fifty mil. Mil- or megabytes, megabytes, or megabytes yeah. yeah, and so it's like two songs. Okay, and then so this what's not a big deal. If you have all the stems on your computer, you just you can just delete them out of your account on Loop Community and just keep re-upload them every week. Man, you know how to save money, don't you? So that's a money to. saving tip from yeah. Mike right there. Five, so five bucks a month would be like fifty gigs. That's all you would need. I have to look at it. I don't, yeah, it's 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 a decent amount. Five or ten bucks a month. That's that's totally like that's totally for their doable. cloud. It's, I it's hope the you guys cloud. have five bucks a month to pay for the church. I hope I hope you guys out there. You're gonna have to have at least five bucks a month. Or to buy like all this gear. say like the church. I, like I said with that, I was doing. We didn't have all that money, so I like I would just buy a track every week on my own personal account. Yeah, you know, just stacked them up. Just that, yeah. And yeah, I, I've done that a lot or, in churches because sometimes mm-hmm. they just like we don't have any budget, and you're like, well, I need this, I'm buying it, yeah. you know. And I know, I know, I know everybody listening does that too. And five bucks a month ain't gonna right. kill nobody. Right. Stop. Stop at Starbucks one time. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, if you go to Starbucks, which I don't tend to go there anymore, it's like, what's up with it's that? Insane. It's like nine dollars for a cup of coffee. Or yeah. Not even a large. It's yeah. I mean, it's like. Yeah. Uh, What's up with that? The, okay, so the so we talked about that. People can upload their own arrangements. You can become a producer for Loop Community. It yeah. sounds like and it's you can make harder. your own money. Yeah, and make your own money. There you go. Yeah, like if you're if you like recording your own stuff, you can apply to be a producer. And you, I mean, you ain't gonna get rich off of it, but yeah, yeah. you get like every time someone downloads the song that you made, you get five ten bucks for it. That'd be good. Yeah, so, I like yeah. that. I like that idea. Uh, Loop Community. It's app based, so you're gonna use it on your iPad or your computer. Can you use it on a PC? No. That's the only downside to Loop Community is it's all Apple. It's got to oh, be Apple wow. products, yeah. Well, I love that's that. That's the only. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> I mean, Apple is made for music production, you know. So is multi-track, can you use it on a PC? That's, I'm not sure. We'd have we to don't know that. that. Yeah, yeah, we're not sure. I, 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 once, I weighed the cost between the two. I just strictly did Loop Community. And then once in a while, because multi-tracks has the rights to more songs than Loop Community does, but sure. multi-tracks does, you know, Christian they do every they you can get 
so much more on multi tracks, and because Loop Community is just Christian based. Yeah, it sounds like they have even like secular. Yeah, tunes secular on there stuff. Now yeah. That you so multi tracks is probably really legit, and it sounds like maybe you felt like in the very beginning. We don't know this for sure now, but in the very beginning, that it was more expensive. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit harder learning curve. It looked a little bit more difficult. Maybe it can be on PC or not. I don't have any PCs. My son has a gaming PC. Does your son have a gaming yeah. PC? Mm -hmm. See, we got to get them back over here. I don't to know. Get it back on Apple. And um, one thing about the iPad, using it on the iPad seemed to be more user friendly. Is that true if you're live? Yeah. Because it's, it's the it's, same. It's the same. It's, it's, there might be a couple like different, just just a touch different things, like from the iPad to the actual Mac version. Yeah. But yeah, iPad just easier. It's easier to carry around. I, I would always tend to go towards Mac because yeah. I want all the controls. I don't want to be. But from the people I've talked to this week, they're like all oh, the iPad because you can mm -hmm. just touch the chorus. Yeah. If you're playing, you wouldn't want to have a computer up there. So yeah, especially if you're like if you're the if you're the one running tracks and because that's how we were talking about the other day. Like if I. Because I do like to play multiple things, but like if I'm at the if I'm at the piano running tracks, I use my Mac. But if I'm leading worship, then I'll have the iPad next to me, so right. out in front, just on the stand next to me, you know, or on my a mic stand, right, and run it all through there, so it's right in front of you. It's much easier as a if you're leading worship to use the iPad than the than the actual Mac. Yeah, I, I would. I discounted the iPad altogether before I talked to you guys because I was like, I don't want. I, I'm just like, I want the app. That, mm -hmm. But I do think that you shouldn't do that. You should, everybody I've talked to has said like, oh, the iPad's just as easy. So I wouldn't discount yeah. it. I personally discounted it because every time I use my iPad for something, it's like it shuts off or uh -oh. runs out of battery or, it, you know, it, mm -hmm. my phone calls come in on it. And so <laughs> yeah, I typically lot. try to shy away from anything on stage with it. But you'd have to turn off the all the notifications. Yeah, and definitely. We've had that like right during the pastor's <laughs> prayer. It's like, ding, dong, ding. Yeah. It's like that's so embarrassing. Yeah, I get my updates for the week. Like your screen, you use this much, and yeah. ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I get that. If done that a few times. Yeah, if I was gonna run an iPad for Loop Community at a church, I would probably just have that's the iPad, and it's gonna stay there because uh, my son's YouTube notifications mm -hmm. would be popping up during worship service or whatever. That's that's what would happen to me. Um. So let's 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 go back over uh, just how to start implementing a simple roadmap. Now, we're going to do a course, a full course on Loop Community. The course is going to include everything from how to set up the sound system, how to set up your in-ears. We're, we're going to do that. It's going to be, it's it's already live if you're here in this podcast. The course is there. You can go to worshiptheking.com and you can just find that course there with Michael and I. So you're going to you're going to have everything. If you're, you know, advanced, you, you probably, it might be too easy, but if you're just starting out on tracks and you want to implement this into your church, that's that's what it's going to be about. We're going to make it all right. Especially, I'm going to give you guys some some good stuff about my in ears. I've been messing with in ears, and we'll maybe we'll just we'll touch on this in this right now. I, I don't like in ears that much, and if you're a singer, you don't like in ears, and everybody's always yanking out their their ear trying mm -hmm. to sing. And so in the chorus, I'm gonna I'm gonna solve a lot of that problem because I've been working with these. Uh, uh, ambient type, uh, well, I just use a room mic in general, but I've been testing where to put the room mic, where to place the room mic, what, how's it affecting me as a vocalist, and then I bought these um, crazy expensive ambient in-ear monitors, which I don't know if I'm going to keep them because it they sound similar to if I just have a room mic, hmm. so I don't know it, they're they're expensive. I'm going to show though in inside this new course, I'm going to show a very simple like fifty dollar fix for a room mic. Or all the way to like crazy expensive ambient headphones, because the biggest the biggest problem I've had with in ears and if and, use, and you, using tracks you have to have them is you can't connect. It's hard to connect with the congregation. You shove those things in your ears, and if you have good in ears and you're up front, then you're like you're in your own world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm going to address that in the course a lot. We might even talk about that in the next podcast on this. But you're going to have to set up a basic in ear system. Uh, you're gonna have to prep the band. How to, this is how to start implementing, and you're gonna have to try to use um, special songs. So let's talk about that. We're gonna we're gonna set up our in ears, and we're gonna set up a system for the band. That would be your first thing because mm -hmm. you can't even roll out a track unless you've got some sort of in ear monitor yeah. thing. And then the next thing would be you're gonna prep the band. You're gonna teach them to play and practice with clicks. So mm -hmm. you you cannot roll out tracks if your drummer can't play to a click. Yeah, you can't. Like I like what I was telling when we we tried to play just click, didn't work. Played this played the track and it was like it was I was blown away instantly. Like drummer got it, 
everybody got it. Like, like we're not perfect. We're going to be sloppy, but they yeah. got it. So, but so that next Sunday, we didn't play all tracks. We just did that one song tracks just to try to implement. And then we just each week maybe added another track or, you know, for a while, maybe just one song with tracks for that week. And then we did a rest, rest of the set without it. Yeah, but, which which is what I wrote. Try to yeah. use a special song or a few songs and maybe just an opening song. Yep. Because you, the band you, is comfortable. If I was in a new band and they threw this at me and I had five songs to a track, I just mm-hmm. my brain would explode. Oh yeah. And you can't explode your band members' brains. You, you're you know you can't. Be, that's irresponsible to do. Yeah. Which we've had a couple people join the band that just couldn't get it. Like they're just like they quit because they were so overwhelmed with I can't play to it and they didn't want to get try because they were so used to their way yeah. of their way of playing and but that's what that's the we were moving forward you know as a band and as a church so yeah implementing is uh, it's definitely a, t- a touchy subject i mean we we uh, implementing them here at spring hill wasn't i mean everybody was on board yeah um, not everybody not we everybody got, we got some pushback yeah, yeah we did we did we had pushback in leadership mm-hmm. pushback in in different things and we we kind of just uh and actually there was quite a bit of pushback in yeah. the very beginning yeah. of like what's this going to do like they didn't know like like the leadership team was like well how is it going to affect this and how is it going to how are we going to flow with this and so it took a even even like um i i remember that early time we just like let's do one song mm-hmm. so you you might have to prove it a little bit yeah. and then i would say now we don't have any any no. any friction the really the ones that didn't want it are all they're all like turn yeah, it on turn it on let's do it yeah so yeah. i think it, it it has to be done well especially if you have um, in our church we have a very active leadership team they're involved mm-hmm. in the worship planning a lot and so you can't just come in and be like hey i got this new setup i'm going to just roll this mm-hmm. out this week you, yeah. you know just just be careful because you, as a worship leader you're going to get pushed back from you could get pushback from your band members. You mm-hmm. get pushback from your sound sound team. Yep. You get pushback from your pastor and even the deacon team. They could just think, I don't know if there's worship wars on track, but I'm sure there are. <laughs> oh, yeah. there. What we had, I would definitely say we'd had that. And now what's wild is they see the benefits of it, of how it's made us just better. And it's not about being better. We're all about excellence where we're here at Spring Hill. Yeah. You know, it ain't about being the best band out there. We're just going to be us. It's, you know, we're not trying to be Elevation. We're not trying to be any... We're just... We play with Elevation almost every week. One of their songs, you know, yeah. with their band or playing with us. But yeah, we're just us. You know, we're just trying to spread the gospel. That's all we're trying to do and do it the best that we can. Not being perfect, but just being excellent in everything we do. And so they, they've seen the benefits and our church has seen the benefits. Like when I first started going there, maybe one or two people raised their hands. And now, I mean, our worship is just... Has exploded, and it's not because of tracks, but tracks have enhanced that, have helped. Yeah, you know, you know what I I think uh, on that note too. I mean, we had we've had worship leader turnover in mm-hmm. our church, but but since then, and it's hard to tell because the tracks are consistent. You know, mm-hmm. so the if you cons- if you it have um, consistent. yeah, yep. it it really when I when I um when I I would come back because I've been in and out for the last couple six months. I'll be like, man, the band sounds really good. They're still like, they're like, and when you had turnover and staff and then mm-hmm. come back, I'm like, man, it's a staff. It sounds good. It's very consistent. Yeah. I think that without tracks, that would be extra, I would say extremely hard to pull off. Yeah. I mean, even though most of the band is still there, it's still, it's very hard. That, that was one of the biggest frustrations I had in early 2000s running, running a, like a medium large church band was every week. And if I would have had tracks, this would have been different, but every week I would have a different drummer and I worked mm-hmm. really hard and a lot of the stuff I teach in the propel mentorship is like how to build separate bands how to train everybody to be consistent but still if you have um, a really good bass player and a really good key player one week and then the next week you have a kind of good bass player and the drummer's a little bit less it, you, you, I'm the same guy every week mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going there with the same expectation like this is going to be at a certain level mm-hmm. and my expectations were just bouncing all over the place yeah. every week oh yeah Depending that's on a, who is there. You know, that's the same where we have now because we have a different bass player every week. Like the only thing that's consistent here is like I play keys just about every week. And then our two worship leaders are there. And so we have – and our drummer. Like we're blessed with two really good drummers here. So the drummer yeah, makes all the difference pretty solid the drummers. Rotation. Yeah, it makes all the difference. And so yeah. like, yeah, but we're playing with different a different bass player every week, different guitar player every week. So that – but by implementing the tracks and then all of us playing together so much, it's – yeah, I mean, definitely you, you definitely feel consistent. it like when you when you have like your best drummer, and then when you have like a new drummer, 
but you but they're still going to play to the track mm -hmm. and they're still going to the track is still going to be there yep. i think i would have i would have been less frustrated in the 2000s with my um worship leading position if i would have had tracks because i would have been like this is what we're doing and it's happening every week and if the guitar player i had some great musicians and some of them if they weren't there i just turn up their part mm -hmm. it would it wouldn't have changed my you know but when when you're not using tracks and your band is not totally up to you know what level you're trying to get to every week i felt that as a leader mm -hmm. i i heard it it was like some weeks were great some weeks were eh. Some mm -hmm. weeks were great. Some weeks were, eh. and it was to me. It was it was emotionally t t tormenting. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. you, Mike and I are mm. kind of the same person. We would be tormented, like oh, just that happened. And tracks, I think, as much as I love, I would love it if every band member would show up every day. Every your your A band member would show up every single week and be on point every single week. Mm -hmm. That would be great, but that's not the real it's just, world. No, it's not. We all have jobs. You know, we all, it's, it's, that's, you know, we're like, we call Thursday night rehearsal, not practice. It's rehearsal. You should know your parts by Thursday because we practice every Thursday for, yeah. our, for Sunday. And, um, but like just, and that's the beauty of tracks too. Like I used to be so against like people like, oh man, we're, our, our, our sets are planned out like three months ahead. And I was like, well, how does the spirit, how does the spirit lead you? Cause I was always like, you know, after Sunday, like pray all week took for the songs and then i wouldn't have the songs ready till saturday night so it, it totally screwed up the band you know because i'm yeah. like i think i have to be like super spiritual i gotta pray all week for these songs but like what's wild is what i've seen god do like here at spring hill we have we have our worship our leadership we have a meeting and we plan out a month or two three months in advance and it just seeing like we planned these songs three months ago but they're they fit perfect with the message like with what the spirit wants to say that week so it's like i see now that god can still three months before can still help us plan three months out you know god can know what's going to gonna happen in yeah, three months i know <laughs> it's wild but that's, you know so that and that's a beauty with tracks too is like with loop community there's there's so much that we could show you guys is like we have our stuff planned out for three months and so like if you're a band member and you're not the best band member well you can see hey i'm on this week and the tracks are and you can go in and like there's a pro plan which is cheap. It's like 10 bucks a month, 10, 15 bucks a month to where like your worship leader can set up the tracks like three months out. And then you just go in and like 20 people on your team can have it. And so whatever the set list is, it's already there on your phone, on your iPad, you just sync it and it shows the list. And then you got, you got three months to practice to get so ready. We don't do this. Right. But that would no, be not yet. phenomenal. No. Yeah. Because you're, you're saying that I could have as a guitar player for like four weeks from now, mm -hmm. I could have the tracks already in my phone and yep. I could turn them on and practice to them. Yeah, and you have four weeks to, to, to nail it. You that know? would be amazing. We do a little bit, like people just use my login Yeah, and yeah. that way, yeah. but there's another way that's a little easier to where like... It's kind of like planning center. You see yeah. the set list, see all the charts, but then you could go into loop community, pull it up on your phone mm -hmm. and just play the it's track. It's all right there, yeah. And that's... Yeah. Um, that yeah. Well, that'd so, be phenomenal. Yeah, it's pretty... I mean, cool. I don't know that I would practice for four weeks but yeah i would practice for four days mm -hmm. before but you know i'm i'm gonna learn it in four days and but if if i knew it was hard then i would yeah. practice for four weeks and there's i mean another thing i don't think we talked about was like what's like say you're doing gratitude by brandon lake well at the end of the song there's like three or four minutes of spontaneous that he does in the track and those tracks are on there so you can delete take those out and just do the song how you can do the song however you want. You can, you can move the, the verse to the end of the song if you want. That's what's awesome about it. But then with if you subscribe to that pro plan, then whatever you change and you save it stays that way. So that's your version of gratitude. So, and then you send it to your team members and it's always the same. Yeah, I've noticed it's like so awesome. some of those songs have like a four minute bridge or something. Yeah. And I'm, I know we've deleted mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we've, so you we just go in and say, nope, we're not doing that part. And Yeah, with the old thing. It. You'd have to do that every time you did that song. You have to go in and delete those parts every time, because you couldn't save them. But now, like, it's got so advanced now to where I can whatever I whatever your worship director or leader whoever whoever sets up the tracks does those. Then you hit sync and it syncs to all your band members' phones or iPads or Macs, and then it's right there for you. You don't have to do anything. Just open it up and go to your set list. That's wild. It's yeah. It's, it's amazing what they've done. So there's no excuse to stink. No. I mean. The, yeah. the tools that we have now, I mean, talking about 25 years ago. Yeah. That's I mean, when I was playing, it was like, you know, yeah. 
you'd have to listen to the song on your CD player and hit pause a thousand times to figure right. out the part, you know, start and stop, start, stop, If start, you don't stop. know your guitar part, you can just go on YouTube and type in yeah. lead part for, you know, whatever song, enter. And there's like 10 different videos of mm. guys like, here's the delay setting. The, it's insane what we have. So, yeah. I mean. If I could have had that back in the day. Yeah, I didn't have, we didn't have, we're mm -hmm. like so it's old. by ear. When I started playing guitar, there was no YouTube. Mm -mm. So how did we even do it? That's what I want to know. Yeah. I mean, that's why that's why our, these young kids like your son, they're like just killing it. They're like, YouTube, they don't need anything. They're just mm -hmm. going there and figure it out. Like, come out like, I did it. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's... That's, I mean, still today, I've been playing for all these years, and I'll get on YouTube and look at a part, and then I'll have to start and, you know, pause it a hundred times on YouTube to get it. But, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I, 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 I use YouTube uh, for especially, like... I'll I'll figure out the song like Line in the Lamb. I'll figure out that lick by ear, but then I'll be like, wait a minute, that that finger seems weird. Let's and I'll watch and be like, oh, there there are different ways to play it, mm -hmm. you know, different f fret positions. And sometimes I just look around to find which one's easy. If it's in the minor pentatonic box, then I'm gonna I'm gonna love it. So let's that that was a pretty big tip. Let's do uh, any any last minute like big big big. Sh tips for you know i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna implement this i'm ready to do it ready to, yeah it just it's gonna be frustrating at first because you might be the only one that gets it and your band might fight you and you know not be able, like i've had people that say i don't want to play and refuse to be my bit but they i mean they came around and got it it just yeah just stick with it keep going it's worth it so you had people you know say literally i'm not playing with you mike i'm yeah, not i'm not, not quit the band mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not putting those things in my ear i'm yeah. not going to listen to that the old school like they they didn't even like having like uh, chords in front of them like they're like i'm i'm a, in i play by ear only and like no <laughs> look at the chord right in front of you play it cuz you're all over the place it just yeah just makes you better but definitely cuz i was wary about it too at that first but i just i want i just wanted something better i wanted to sound better i wanted the that's all it does. It just enhances. It's not. It doesn't replace. It enhances. But you came from a. You're you're talking about a church that was very, uh, flowy. Yeah. Very flowy. Like, like more gospel. More gospel yeah. and just all, kind of yeah. all over the place. Like we didn't have. There was no structure. Right. Really. Like we had our three songs or whatever, and then if something took off, it took off. And then here we're at now. When I came here, I was like everything was to the minute structured. Which I it took me a while to get. I didn't like that because I came from free flowing to yeah, structure. It's a way different. But I mean, but the I mean the Bible talks about being in order. Like and I, so I always thought like when I came here, I was like, oh, the Spirit ain't gonna flow here because we're by the minute. Pastor preaches for twenty two <laughs> minutes, you know, and then he's done, you know. And this song is five minutes and thirty seconds. Not, in, but what the pastor has helped a lot of that. He wants more expressive worship. So he's like, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, those time limits on the on those planning center mm -hmm. things seem very weird. But yeah. you know, it, it's. It's um, it's definitely there's definitely still room, mm -hmm. but it's you know tons of room. To... But coming from where you went to tracks, but you you were able to implement tracks. Now I'm just putting all this together in my mm -hmm. mind. You were able to in this church is like flowy, flowy, like all this. You were able to implement tracks and actually and still use flow. Them. Yeah, still. And still flow. Like we wouldn't do like you know lion and lamb, and then I mean we could and then go right to the next song. But like I mean if if churches if people are worshiping like you don't want to stop that. So we like we just noodle around for a little while, you know, and then we can go to the next track. So it's yeah. like there's so many, or I mean and you don't, don't always have to have the track to go back into the song. Just go back That's into true. it because once you start doing these tracks, your band's gonna be tight and and you won't. It's crazy because once you start doing this, like now, like even on the radio, every song I listen to on the radio, I hear the click. Like it's in, it's just, you just hear it. Like you're yeah. tapping your foot to it. You hear it, the you structure. Know? You hear the, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that's what. Yeah. And, just, and Christian music and worship music, it's all very structured. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all like, the same. It's very, it's yeah. very grid oriented. I mean, you, you know, you're going to have a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. And, and some of the artists have went weird on that, but you know, it's typically going to be that, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what's amazing about this app is you can do anything. You can, like I said, you can move. If you love that bridge and want to do it, Six more times, move it to the. You can, you can start with the bridge if you wanted to. Before you couldn't do that. It took a lot to get to flow that way. Because it's cool to start. You could start with like a down bridge of the song, you know, with the pad. And then you, it, it, and you don't even have to click anything. You can set this app to where soon as like, and you can set it for, I'm going to sing this bridge for a minute and 20 seconds. 
and then we're going to go into the full song. So you can set that pad and click to a minute, 20 seconds, and it automatically goes right into the song. So right it's like click, super yeah. flow. Like there's no odd moments, you know. Yeah, like when I'm standing there on stage, there's a pad going on, and we're waiting for the pastor to talk. I mean, it's still we're noodling around. And then whenever it's like time to go, I just hear the one, two, yeah. three. You know, it tells you like we're going. Mm-hmm. And that's all controlled, very controlled. Yeah. So, I mean, you can wait or you can go. I would, and, and if anybody's got questions like how reliable is it, like back in the day, and what's crazy is I've seen like forums, like so many forums of people like, oh, I hit play today and nothing happened. And it was the first song of the services. Like, so we just had to like, we freaked out and we just had to play without the track. And I've, I've used Loop Community for like seven years now. And anytime it messed up was because I hit something wrong. Like I hit the mute, but I'm, I might have, we were at the end of practice. Someone wanted to hear their part. So I soloed their part. You know, and then I forgot to unsolo it. So when I hit play, that's all that came out was that part. It was everything was my fault. But this like two weeks ago, I hit play and nothing happened. And so all I did was most time if 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 it messes up, which they fix so much stuff now, it's it's super reliable. Is you just just shut the app off and turn it back on, and then everything's fine. Because sometimes you know, I mean, apps anything man made is gonna could mess up. Yeah, I mean, but like, yeah, we, nothing happened. Yeah, right? it was bad. all it is like because me, I'm the, the director, so I got a mic, I can talk to everybody. So I just told the words, but hey, it's like stall, for, say something for a second, like give a testimony for a second, and I shut the app down. I mean, 20 seconds, it, it shut down, turned back on, everything was fine. But that was the only time in seven years I've ever had any problems with it. it yeah, and I don't time. think that, even though that was a, probably the biggest epic failure of the app yeah. at that moment. I mean, it was the it was the start of the service. I was there. I was yeah. on stage, and we were just kind of eeny, waiting to waiting to go, and then all of a sudden, nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And then Derek just started talking because yep. you told him, "Hey, start talking." And and that's the other great thing so about give me a second, the yeah. in ears and the music director. You know, they get like, "Hey, you know, you need to talk now." And so without without that, in the old days, it'd be like turn around, looking at each other. What mm-hmm. are you doing? Talking, whispering. Yeah. And it, I don't think anybody noticed anything. Mm-hmm. They just thought uh, it was a moment of pause, and then Derek started doing his thing so that's yeah. another yeah that is that is another thing that would go right in with the big big so it, three tips at the end yeah, you've got the music reliable. director you've got the reliable and you've got you can talk to each other at least the band director can talk to everybody hey hey the app's not working we're going to do this song without a click you know mm-hmm. do that song while the app starts up or something yeah so you could do all that all right well m- remember uh i want to thank mike for coming in for the podcast also remember we are going to be putting together a course today we're going to be recording all this today in the studio we're going to have it out so if you're listening to this podcast you can click on the description in this video or you can just go to worshiptheking.com you can look for the loop community tracks program it'll go also into the propel worship mentorship right away i want everybody in the propel mentorship to have this so it's going to go right in there if you want to learn more about that just go to propelworship.com where we're doing a full year mentorship for certification through Church Answers. You can actually become a certified worship leader, which is really important. You're going to learn everything from how to lead worship, how to build a band, how to make schedules. You're going to learn. You you might even see Michael in there on the uh, Bolster social app, giving you his input on running tracks and being a music director at a church, um, a medium to small church. It's a, it's a great uh, certification. It can open up doors for you. So thank you, Mike, for coming in, and uh, I'm excited to get this going on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.